Hello and welcome to video 14 uh, for Math 123. This is our third video on the topic of geometry. And in this video we're going to be specifically looking at polygons. Now, technically in the last video we were looking at triangles, uh, which is also considered a polygon. And so let me give you guys a definition as to what exactly a polygon is. Polygon is a closed figure made with straight lines. Pretty simple definition. Now, sides do not have to be the same length. And we saw that with the triangles. So we could have like a scalene triangle where all three sides are different. That's okay. However, if the sides are equal, we call that regular polygon. So if we're talking about, say, a five-sided figure, if those five sides have different lengths, it's just a polygon. If they have the exact same length, then it's a regular polygon. So again, we looked at triangles, tri meaning three, so three sides, or three angles. And this one we're going to start with a quadrilateral. So quad is meaning what? Four sides, so it's a four-sided figure. And in the triangle, the sum of all the angles was 180 degrees. In a quadrilateral, the sum of the angles gives us a total of 360 degrees. So if you forget, oh my gosh, how many, how many degrees is it? Think of a square. A square has what? Four right angles, so 4 times 90, 360. So quadrilateral, four sides, but it doesn't have to be a square. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. We have other types of quadrilaterals. First one we'll talk about is what's known as a trapezoid. And a trapezoid has two parallel sides. So for example, if the top and the bottom are parallel, if I connect the top to the bottom, that forms a trapezoid. So the top and the bottom are parallel. The other sides don't have to be parallel. They don't have to be the same length. That gives us a trapezoid. So let's label this guy A, B, C, D. And if I draw a dotted line vertically here, that's H. That's the height of the trapezoid. So we have the following property. If A B uh, sorry, if B C is parallel, so we draw sort of these two slashed marks. So if B C is parallel to A D, like we have here, and if angle A, and so we abbreviate angle with sort of a little piece of the triangle. So if angle A is equal to angle D, then we have what's called an isosceles trapezoid. Up here. So what would that look like? Well, 
The top and bottom are parallel like before, but now these angles, so angle A and angle D, are the same. Therefore, because these angles are the same, these sides end up being the same length. <clears throat> so it's an isosceles trapezoid. And it's essentially what? It's an isosceles triangle if I kept drawing this and we just cut off the top of the triangle. That gives us an isosceles trapezoid. All right, the second type of quadrilateral we have is what's known as a parallelogram. And with this parallelogram, we see what word? Parallel. So in this case, opposite sides are parallel. So maybe I have the top and the bottom are parallel, and then the two sides are parallel but going this other direction, that would be considered a parallelogram. Again, we have this dotted line down the middle telling us what's the height of this parallelogram. And I've given you guys this height because later on when we start figuring out areas, we're going to need to know these different uh, parts of the uh, polygons. All right, so that's a parallelogram. We have special types of parallelograms. Let's call this C. We have a, what's called a rhombus. We have a rectangle and square. So these are all parallelograms but have certain properties to them. So a rhombus So all sides are equal, but angles are not 90 degrees. What type of polygon do we have where all the sides are equal and the angles are 90 degrees? That's a square. So think if we took a square and then pushed the top over to the right, so the sides are all still the same length, it just kind of gets pushed over. That's what a rhombus is. So all the sides are the same, but the angles are not 90. Rectangle, I'm sure you guys know this one. So all angles are 90 degrees, but sides are not the same length. And you can see how this is all building up to the square. So rhombus, same, same length sides, not 90 degrees rectangle, 90 degrees, not same length sides, and then of course the square is all angles 90 degrees, and all sides are the same length. So that would give us, of course, a square. That's quadrilateral. That's our different types of four-sided figures. Trapezoid, where we only have two parallel sides. Parallelogram, where we have opposite sides are parallel. And then if we break that down a little further, we get into rhombus, rectangle, or square. Now, of course, there's no limit on how many sides we can have. So other polygons... We have what? A pentagon. Well, we know the U.S. government has their pentagon building. Why is it called a pentagon? It has pentagons.
tenth, which is five. So five sides. We have a hexagon. Hex is our key here that we have six sides. And the other you're familiar with, hopefully, is the octagon. Octa meaning eight, so like a stop sign has eight sides to it. And again, th this is just three that you might be used to. You could have a decagon, ten sides. You could have as many sides as you wanted to draw. Uh, that would be a polygon as long as it creates a closed figure and all the sides are straight. You couldn't have curved sides on it. So last two bits of this video here are uh, two topics that have to do with these figures. The first one is the idea of similarity. And so a definition for this. We say that two figures are similar if their corresponding sides and corresponding angles are the same. So we'll look at an example. So let me, if you want to hit pause, if you want to get caught up on the writing, that's fine. So we're going to go back, we're going to look at triangles. And if you remember, we had that uh, Pythagorean triples. That's where we can talk about similar uh, polygons. So the example says, if a triangle has sides 3, 4, 5, so that's one of our Pythagorean triples, you should probably put if a right triangle, sorry, if a right triangle has sides 3, 4, 5, What is the length of the shortest side of a similar triangle that has longest side equal to 15. So we have what? We have a right triangle. It's one of our Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5. If I have a similar triangle, similar right triangle, and it's telling me the longest side is 15, well, because it's similar, they're both right triangles, they have corresponding sides, um, corresponding uh, angles. Well, how do I get from 5 to 15? I have to multiply by 3. So if I'm looking for the shortest side, that's going to be this guy here, which also would have to get multiplied by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So on a similar triangle, if the longest side is 15, the shortest side, I would have had to multiply by 3, so 3 times 3 tells me that the shortest side would be 9. So that's the idea of similarity. So if, a polygon is, if polygons are similar, they have the same corresponding sides and angles, and we can figure out the other sides based on the multiples. The second idea we're going to look at 
is what's called congruence. So unlike similarity, congruence means two figures have exactly the same size and shape. So they're both octagons with each length is six, whatever. So they're the exact same figures essentially is what congruence is talking about. Now for praxis, uh, so go ahead and pause if you need to catch up on the writing and erase this so I have a little more room here. So for praxis, when we're talking about congruency, we have the following ideas. The first is what we call SSS, and this stands for side, side, side. So all corresponding sides are equal. We have SAS, so side, angle, side. So two sides and the angle between, so the angle is in the middle of our two S's, that means the angle is in between the two sides. Are equal. And then the third is either angle, side, angle, or you could also see it as angle, angle, side. And in this case, two angles and one side are equal. So again, this is the idea of congruency. Essentially, it's the same figure. The sides, the angles are the same. Therefore, that's how we can prove it's the same figure. So that's it for polygons. Um, come on back for the fourth video. We're going to look at circles. And then we're going to get start getting into a little bit about areas. So angle, areas of uh, rectangles, areas of circles, areas of triangles, etc. So come on back. Uh, that video will wrap up uh, our geometry section.